Okay, welcome back to Daily Driven Alpha. Today we're going to just walk you through uh, as to where we're at with our wiring. Uh, talk to you uh, about the changes we made from the generator to the alternator. Uh, show you uh, how simple the wiring for that is. Uh, show you uh, a couple of pieces of electrical equipment that we use that everyone should have if, you, if you're going to do some wiring in the car. Um, show you the back of the dashboard with some wiring. Uh, sometimes that makes it easier for people. Talk to you about how we burnt our wiper motor out, $250 up in smoke uh, in five minutes. Hopefully you can avoid doing the same thing. And uh, we'll have a look at the cigar lighter setup uh, and what we found. And we've got a new windscreen for the car, so I'll show you that as well. Let me get set up and I'll bring you right back. Okay, as you can see, here's the old generator, big lumpy thing. and. Uh, here is the associated relay that, uh, that goes with these and uh, these old Bosch relays, uh, you can buy them new, they're expensive, this one works so we're not throwing it out and they normally sit there uh, and the wiring harness that comes with this car from Classic Alpha is set up for a generator and it's got spare wires that connect to these spades but we're not using them and we'll show you why. What we've done is we've installed uh, a modern alternator into the car and it's got its own regulation uh, attached to it. The only thing that you will need to do, and you'll see it here, there's a red wire from the battery and it's just short run down to the stud here, that's for the power. And then the, altern the alternator itself has a, uh, a wire that's in the harness for the signal to uh, your dashboard We've connected that to this spade here, okay, and I think uh, they've got a D plus on, uh, on the back of the alternator. So you connect that and you'll need to connect your thin blue wire, you can just see it there in, in the harness, uh, we've, it, it runs back into here, there's two wires that connect together, we've connected those and run it back into that signal wire from uh, the alternator. So there's a few wires that will be hanging spare and you might be able to see just down here what we've done is we folded them back on themselves, wired them up and just kept them sitting in the harness rather than cutting them out. Right, fuse box, uh, all your power and all your uh, inputs on this side, all your outputs on this side. What we have changed is we've moved the cigar lighter power, it's supposed to be sitting back here and that means it would be hot uh, all the time. So uh, I think uh, obviously if you're sitting in the car and you wanted to light your cigar, you could do it any time without the ignition on. We didn't feel comfortable with that so we've moved it over here so that it only gets active or hot when you turn the ignition on. So. Um, put that in. The other tip that uh, if you look, watch Jay Leno, he says always put a, uh, a safety switch in your car where you can isolate your battery. It's probably a good idea. Now one of the pieces of equipment that we are using is an electric circuit tester and, uh, and obviously a multimeter. But this little electric circuit tester connects to your negative and your positive terminals and uh, you'll see it, uh, it's got a little rocker switch, you can inject power or you can inject earth. The way that this works, for instance, if we wanted to check that the engine was earthing properly, you can see that, we just touch it, it tells us there's earth. If we go to a, uh, a power input and we touch one of the terminals, lights up with red, says there's power. The other thing that is really good about this is if you wanted to test a circuit and you wanted to inject 12 volts in, into it to see if it's working, let's use the horn for example. When we touch that you can see that it's negative. Now if we inject 12 volts hopefully the horn will go off. Let's see what happens. Whoop, bit of a spark and yes it does. So very handy little uh, piece of equipment. I think it was about 30 bucks. Uh, uh, Australian uh, for us. You can spend a lot more on these so you can get more complicated ones. The other thing that uh, we highly recommend you do, get a circuit diagram, print it out in uh, the ones in colour offline, 
and uh, very handy around the car. Um, we've also got this on our devices and so it makes it handy uh, just to have it on a screen as well at times. Uh, so have a look at that. Now let's just go back to the inputs here and I'm just going to focus on a couple of key things. The wire that came off your uh, alternator that uh, is for your signal comes into this blue wire here. These two attach to the, uh, the bulbs uh, on your uh, dash uh, indicator and uh, this one obviously comes to the bulb that uh, shows you uh, the light come on at ignition and then goes off when you start the car. One pink wire coming in, this one attaches to the dash and powers your instrumentation. So let's go over, have a look at that and uh, we'll talk about that setup. So you end up with, this is the old pink daisy chain wiring, and then you end up with another two uh, lots of black wiring that's similar. Firstly, the pink one, that pink wire that was coming in from uh, the, uh, under the uh, dashboard, that connects to this and then daisy chains along only from your instruments, uh, your fuel and uh, oil pressure and your oil temperature and water temperature and to the base of uh, the fitting for your dynamo light. This is the one where that blue wire goes. These wires provide power to uh, your instruments. The other fittings here are for the instrument inputs, uh, so from your uh, oil sender, etc., temperature sender uh, from the car. Now, the black wires, there's uh, two sets. There's one that's insulated and one that's uninsulated. The insulated ones, this provides power from, this will attach to your switch from your dashboard and it'll provide power to your lights. And they will come on, obviously, when you put your lights on from uh, your binnacle um, uh, at the uh, steering column. The other one will have a fitting like this and you'll notice that these are uninsulated and these are the ones that are your earth wires that attach to the body of uh, the um, instruments themselves and they go along to every single one of these instruments. So uh, what we've done is we've just tidied them up, tried to sort of zip tie them together to try and keep the wiring as tidy as possible uh, underneath there. Uh, so it sort of helps uh, whenever you're sort of working underneath there or you have to fault find later down the track. Okay, let's quickly talk about the uh, cigar lighter. So we've put our little cigar lighter in and you'll notice that it's got wiring here, a big heavy duty red wire and that is for power and then a white wire for a light. We don't have a light fitting so we've just folded that back on itself and we've just put the power to this. Inside there is a spring and a fitting with a spade on it and that's for your earth and we've got a black earth strap from that to the body inside here. Test this, bench test this outside the car first. You should be able to press that down then um, once it heats up and lights up and expands it'll release and turn off. We chose to move that cigar uh, wire, as we said, um, to the accessories so that it's not hot all the time. Okay, just going to take you across the bench. Let's talk about our, our $250 mistake. Right. Brand new wiper motor and we cooked it. It's absolutely charcoal inside. We cleaned it up outside, we got it sort of moving a bit, but it's, oh, it's done. It got so hot that it heated up uh, the, the framework that the mechanism sat on and uh, took quite a bit to cool down. What happened was, um, just watch, when you're installing these new motors, the distance of the stud here that comes through from the uh, drive mechanism and the nut bound up with, we had to bend this slightly now to give it the clearance. This was bent 
flatter and it bound up against this stud or the motor and the motor was just trying to drive against it and by the time we realised what was happening it was too late. So lesson learnt is uh, make sure all your switches are turned off before or disconnect any of those motors and test them individually uh, as you go because we were trying to do multiple things at once and as a consequence we couldn't get to well by the time we realised that it was getting hot it was too late. So right let's talk about this new windscreen. Laminated, beautiful, brand new. I looked at the sticker that's uh, at the back here, made in 2007. It's been sitting on the shelf in an auto glass warehouse here. 215 Australian dollars, happy days. Laminated, you'll notice here, you can see that line. That's the laminate between the two pieces of glass. Here's the original one, toughened glass, no laminate and uh, we would have loved to use this but uh, it's peppered with stone chips and we thought we'd get it repaired but the uh, glazier just said to us can't touch it it'll shatter into a million pieces and actually nowadays it's illegal to put it back in the car because uh, you need laminate we have another laminated windscreen here but unfortunately on one corner it's starting to delaminate right here and uh, you can start to see a, a little bit of that uh, bubbling in the corner um, can't do much with that but what we'll do is we'll keep that as an emergency for one of our other cars if ever we have a broken or cracked windscreen. Okay, so there we have it. A uh, little bit of an update. As you can see, we're getting ready uh, in for the interior uh, to be completed. We'll need to put the dash back in. And uh, now that everything we know everything's working, and then we'll start to crack on, get the windscreen in, and hopefully there's a bit more progress for you to see uh, in the near future. Look, I uh, hope your projects are going well. Uh, always happy to receive your comments and, uh, and your thoughts, as long as they're respectful, which they always are. And, uh, you know, like, subscribe, share this uh, with the wider uh, community who are interested. And uh, once again, thank you very much for following our channel. We certainly appreciate it. And uh, we'll have uh, some more progress up for you in the next couple of weeks. Thanks for watching.